Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Coding with Veral. We are still in a series of videos on low-code application development using AppSmith. Today, we're going to build a basic sign-up form using AppSmith. Let me show you what we will be creating by the end of this video. We'll have a sign-up form like this, where a user for our application can create an account. The user will be able to enter their full name, email address, password, and select a file for their avatar specifically an image. Spoiler, we will need to revisit the avatar for part of our account creation process. So let's get started. We'll create a new page by clicking the plus button next to the item listing page. In the dropdown, we're gonna select blank page because we don't want to use data to generate our page or a template. We're gonna be building this up from scratch. Let's first add a container element to encapsulate the other elements. We don't need it, but grouping element makes it easier to organize and move things around if we need to, or sometimes to style the background to a group of elements so we can give the user hints. Let's add a logo to our signup page. If you don't see the elements listed on the left, click the plus new element and button to display the element, just as shown in the previous video. So. Anytime you don't see the elements you want, just remember to click that plus um, new element button. Drag and drop an image element onto the page. I'm putting mine on the left side. Um, you can upload a logo or resize it and resize it as needed. Today, I'm going to just leave it blank and not add any um, logo or anything. Before we start adding elements to our page for inputs, such as the username, password, and so on, let's encapsulate them in a form. Um, this gives us validation across elements and make our code neater. Um, if you don't use a form, what you wouldn't be able to do is to say, well, let me disable submission of the form if one or more fields doesn't match some validation criteria I might have. If this doesn't make sense to you right now, don't worry about it. We'll cover it another time. But just trust me and let's always use a form if we have input elements. At least that's what we want to do for now. So add a form to the page drag it from the list of elements, add it to the left of your image. We, of course, we're gonna change the name of the form to say sign up. Additionally, we can add a text element with some instruction about signing in if the user already have an account or to fill out this form to create a new account. Style the text as you like. I will simply make it small text and remove bold. And I do style it by going to the style tab for the elements property. I'm going to add another button inside the form that says sign in. And that's because uh, my instruction here says that if you already have an account, you should just sign in. So I want a button when we do have the sign in form that takes the user to that sign in form. Um, we can make this sign in button a secondary or tertiary button, um, including adding icons to the button. Don't be afraid to experiment a bit and see what you like. You can also um, undo or delete the element and start over if you mess things up. Finally, edit the submit button text to say sign up. So let's talk about account creation. So when we were doing pocket base in episode three, we had this file user API, which we used to experiment with listing users and how to create users. And the most basic way to create a user account is simply to give the password and confirm the password. And packet base does the validation in the back end to make sure that the password matches. So we're not going to do any password validation on the front end. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to ask the user to type in the password twice and we'll send that to packet base. Now we can give the user the ability to provide a username, which you can use with the password to log in or email address. To keep things simple, I'm going to simply say that all we're going to do is support email and password when we do the login form. And so for a con creation, we're not going to include a username. Full name, we're going to include just because it's nice of you to have a full name. In terms of signing up, we're going to have full name, email address, password, but we need to collect the password twice. So let's just drag those elements, drop it within the form, style them as you see fit. Key thing to do is for email and password, you want to select the type of the input and make sure it says email type for the email input and 
password for the password ones. The nice thing about that, when you set the type correctly, is AppSmith will make sure that for the password, the user can see or anyone can see the password as you type it. For email, it's going to validate that the email is a valid email. And that's where now having validation for your form means that oh, you can disable the sign up button if the form is invalid. So nobody can click the sign in button unless let's say they type in both password or they have a valid email. If you don't put the control within the form, it's going to be very difficult for you to do this. All right. So assuming that you have your form created with the elements, um, now we can move on to connecting um, the logic for our form. Basically, now we have this form, it doesn't do anything. So how do we make sure that when we click the sign up button, it actually collects the information from the form and make an API call? Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. We can have a Java function or we can call um, an action. There are a bunch of different types of actions we can attach to our form when it's clicked. And you can see apps may support a number of things, displaying a modal, all sort of things. But for us, we're going to use an API call. And so you can see we have the Query tab, JavaScript, and UI tab. So we'll click on Query, and we'll see we can add a new API. So let's click on API, and then we're going to fill out the body. Now, for this API, we need to make sure that oh, we're calling the endpoint for pocket base. So if you forget what that's supposed to be, go back to your item listing form and your item listing page. And if you click on the table, you remember that we had this column called image that fetched the images, the image that we want to display for that item from pocket base. Now back in our editor, we can see that to create a user, we have to use HTTP post method with a JSON document and the header content type JSON application. So let's go back into our AppSmith and create our API. We already see that our, for the header, it has application JSON. We're not going to use query parameter when we create call in post. So we skip that and we click on body. Within body, we can see that AppSmith allows us right here to use expression. Remember, those are the double curly braces or handlebar or mustache, people call them different things. So we want to create a JSON document here. So we're going to basically create one dynamically. We're going to start with a single open and close curly braces. And within there, our JSON document, we want name as a field. And then the value for that is going to be fetched from our form, which is going to be the control that we call text phone name. I call my controls this, this way so I can have an idea of what it is that I'm referencing. And then for the same thing for the password and email, very straightforward. So this is how our document or JSON document will be created. So this is all we need. Um, we can see that right now, since there are no values inside of our control, our JSON document doesn't have anything but an empty string. But So why don't we just type some value into our control and ensure that all this JSON form will be created as we think. And as you can see, it is. Uh, onto the settings tab for this API, you'll see that you can have this API run every time the form is loaded. We definitely don't want that. We only want it to run when the user click the button, not when it's loaded. Um, everything else we'll just leave unchanged. There's nothing here to change. Um, we'll revisit this if there's any, ever anything we need to change when we develop other APIs. And we're going to name it create user. So now that we have our API, it's time to hook it up to the sign up button. All we our API says is that if it's call, it will try to fetch these values. But there's nothing that says that oh, when we click the sign up button to call this API. So let's do that. Let's now connect the sign up button with our API that we just created. So we go back to our UI, we click on the sign up button, and next to on submit, we click the plus button to add an action and we select um, query and then create user. 
We don't need to pass any parameters because we're not using that. And notice how they say um, create user that run because that's what we want to do. Just run this um, API call. And, and that's it. So we can now um, check if our form worked by clicking on the preview button. We fill in the detail and we click the sign up button. Notice that we get an error. So what's happening? If we go back to our command line and we look, we'll see that we already have a user, um, John Doe at email.com. So that's why it failed. Okay, let's create an, another user. Let's call Jane Doe. So now when we try to use Jane Doe, this also fails. So what's the problem? If we go back to our pocket base and we look at the API rules, we'll see that for creating user, we want the user to be authenticated. And that's because we wanted to lock down a con creation to a admin role. And so now we don't want that. We want users to be able to just sign up themselves without an admin creating their account. So we can clear this field and for create and then save it and then go back now to our form. And now we see we can successfully create our account. So that's great. The only thing left for us to do now is to add a file upload for our avatar. And let's go back to our, our UI tab and drag a file upload element to our form. We'll put it right between the last password and the sign up button. Now I rearrange things here a bit because for the password, we don't need it to be this wide. So I put password and password confirm, the two password input on the same line or row if you like. And then I put the avatar upload file button just below that. Okay, so of course, I'm gonna name this file avatar just so in code, I know that I'm dealing with a file as opposed to a text box, for example. And so I go back to our API and I'll add this field to the form body. Assuming we selected a file on our form, when we click the submit button, we'd like for our new account to also have that file associated with it. Now we go and preview our new form again and we filled out this time with Jane Smith, very creative. We'll select an avatar for Jane and now we'll click the sign up button. And notice it runs successfully. Now we just have to go to pocket base to see if we have successfully created this account with the avatar. And we can see right away that when we refresh, the account is created, but the avatar field doesn't have a value. So clearly that did not work. So that's the spoiler. We have to come back and see how exactly we can include um, file. Now we know that we can create um, files and store them in pocket base and associate them with records. We did that successfully for our item list. And that's how we create a basic signup form using AppSmith. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like and share with others. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and bell icon to be notified when I publish more tutorial like this one. Also, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. I couldn't do this without you. I appreciate it. I'm sorry for the delay. Thank you for your patience and for commenting. Definitely try creating your own form in AppSmith. It doesn't have to be just this sign up one. Try creating some other forms that you think you'd need for your application and let me know how it goes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.